All right, let's move on to uh, visitor statements. The Board of Education welcomes and encourages the participation of its citizens in the business of the school district. Thank you for your attendance. There are two points in me where visitor statements are scheduled. Citizens are, are welcome to ask questions or make comments, either one. Comments will be limited to three minutes. If a person would like additional time to address the board, such a request should be submitted in writing 40 hours before the meeting to the superintendent. For more details, please refer to board policy 2 colon 230, public participation at the Board of Education meetings and petitions to the board. At that time, anybody want to speak on this side? Seeing not anybody want to speak on this side, please raise your hand. Okay, so we'll start with you over there. We'll work our way over. Okay, ma'am, you can sit up here, stand up here, and or sit. We'll let you know when you have about 30 seconds, okay? Hi, my name is Colleen Smith. Writing Dr. Smith in the Board of Education Administration. My daughter is Erin Smith Truesdell, and she is a proud bulldog, proud bulldog of the class of 2000. In her tenure at Riverside Brookfield High School, she was a four-year member of the music department and choir, participated in spring musicals and fall plays, took photography one and two, honors humanities, was a student assistant in choral music, student director for the fall play, took private voice lessons, and was a member of the gymnastics team. She also was the only vocalist chosen to represent the state of Illinois, and not to mention her community, in the Sound of America Honors Chorus that spent the month of July 1999 touring six European countries. She has sung on some of the finest concert stages and historical cathedrals in Europe, including Notre Dame and San Marco. While at RB, she took two years of Spanish, three years of math, and three years of science, all of which exceeded her graduation requirements at the time. She's a 2005 graduate of Northern Illinois University, where she received her BA in music education. While she was well at NIU, she sang in all of the offered choirs, traveled to Poznan, Poland to perform in an international choral festival, sang an opera workshop, received scholarships for her work as a music educator major, and held office in the student chapter of the American Choral Directors Association. Through the Community School of the Arts, she taught private voice lessons and was selected to be an assistant teacher in early childhood music courses. Since graduating from NIU, she has spent her nine-year career teaching study skills and general and choral music in community unit school district 300. She has spent the last seven of her years, of her career, part of the music team at Hampshire Middle School, where she worked together with her administration to nurture her students' right to a well-rounded education that includes not only the core classes, but also options for music participation. Currently, she is pursuing her master's degree in curriculum and instruction through Concordia University, Chicago, and is expected to graduate in May of 2015. She has been working closely with her principal to grow as an instructional leader in her building. She was also selected to serve on the Rising Star Committee and also as a leader of the Quantum Learning Team. She is striving to improve her instruction as an educator, an educator that happens to specialize in music. She, is also, she was also invited to be a charter member of the Core Contiamo, an up-and-coming professional choir founded by Dr. Eric Johnson, Director of Choral Activities at NIU. She has recorded two CDs with her most recent mastered at Abbey Road st Studios of Beatles fame in London, England. She has been chosen to be the headline performer at the Michigan ACDA conference this fall, and her next CD project begins in the summer of 2016. The above is not a boastful display of herself, but a humble note to thank Riverside Brookfield High School for playing such an indelible role in her development as a person and professional educator and musician. In Section 6 of the board policy, Mrs. it Smith, states... Mrs. your three minutes are up. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, who wants to speak next? Okay. Good evening. My name is Erin Smith Truesdell. That was my mother speaking um, partially on my behalf. Um, the above was not a boastful display of myself, but it was a humble note of thanks to the RBHS community for playing such an indelible role in my development as a person and as a professional educator and musician. In Section 6 of the Board Policy, it states, the district's educational program will seek to provide an opportunity for each student to develop his or her maximum potential. All of these accomplishments, life skills, career skills, respect for education, and passion for lifelong learning were developed and were seeds planted in me here while I was at RBHS, where I was free to maximize my potential. 
I am fortunate to have attended such an excellent high school that invested in me not just a student. I was not just a number. I was a name and I was a person. And I had a unique skill set that needed to be fostered. I was able to explore all avenues of interest to me, which included full access to what grew to be a very highly respected music education department in the state of Illinois during my tenure here. Recruiting and retaining high quality teachers is not just about having top ranking quality schools as a whole, but also about having respectable and competitive programs. It is music programs like the one at this school which mold more than musicians. Healthy music programs mold empathetic citizens who know how to use their brains in dynamic and innovative ways to contribute positively to an enduring and productive society. Healthy music programs are well staffed with experts in their field. They embrace the holistic education of the child. The whole is truly a sum of its parts. Having said all of this, I am urging you to reconsider your views of music education and its place in the RBHS community. To reduce the music program here by any 0.1 less or more would be drastic. To reduce this program here would be a loss to all past, present, and future generations of bulldogs. Music is part of the cognitive foundation of the human brain, not an entertainment item to be downplayed by dollar signs. My parents are still stakeholders in this community, and while I have moved on to new communities in both my personal and professional lives, I will always consider myself a stakeholder at RBHS. When I was a student bulldog, we lived by the slogan, we are RB. I beg of you to truly reflect on what we really are, what we could be, and what we should do to get there. I hope that you will take the time to really consider my you words and not, just, slip, please. and not just pass my letter off as a concerned stakeholder. I hope that holistic educational offerings at RB will continue to include a strong, well-respected and supported music program. I hope that the idea of a strong and educationally appropriate staffed music program is one that resonates with your views of what RBHS was, is, and strives to be. I am RB and I have done, and what I have done in my life, I hope that I've done this school and the educators that, that, three minutes are up. that invested in me the justice that they deserve. Thank you kindly for your time. Thank you. All right. Who uh, wants to speak next over here? Please step up. And thank you for your time. My name is uh, Anthony Pollock. I've been in the district for over 30 years. And I've seen the continued abuse of the arts departments over that time. Uh, I can remember when my oldest son came in and the band was just a trickle of people through the hard work Kevin McGolgan and some of the other teachers was brought to a proud marching unit that the school could be very very uh, proud of. Uh, all of my sons uh, attended the school, participated in sports and in the arts and in particular uh, you'll be hearing from my son Douglas who is an Actors Equity member and also a musician and he was encouraged by Mrs. Morelli, Mr. McGolgan. He has come to earn his living as a performer. I urged my nephew and his wife to buy a home in Brookfield because of the excellent all-around education. Right now, i got to say I'm sorry I, I, I encourage that. Because the first department that always seems to get murdered is the arts. And as you look at history, that is the beginning of the end of civilization. We saw it back when the Huns overran Europe. We're seeing it today with ISIS. I urge you to strongly reconsider your position on this. Also, if I was a teacher or any kind of employee and my bosses came to me and said, we're going to cut your pay 10%, but keep doing a good job. I don't know that I'd be very motivated. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay. All right, anybody else that wants to speak on this thing? Please step up. Good evening, thanks for your time. That's my dad. I am Douglas, who he's talking about. Uh, I'm also a former student of here. Uh, 
As you said, I'm a member of Equi Actors' Equity. I make my living doing this. That's all I do. I'm an actor and I'm a musician. I was a drum major while I was here. I can say that every skill that I use in my daily life as a performer, I learned while I was here. It started here. I didn't really know what I was doing before I got here. Before I left, I was in chamber choir. I was in the symphonic band. I was in the uh, honors jazz band as well. I went to Allstate representing us as the honors jazz vocalist. Um, all of those things started while I was here. And to be honest, the things that the students here can achieve is only limited by the things that you give them in preparation. If they don't have the outlets to use to develop those skills, if they don't learn about themselves while they're here, I don't really know what other place they have to do that in. Because if you don't learn in high school, most people don't try to seek it out further in college. You, you have to find that inspiration somewhere. And to be honest, when I was in band and choir here, those students are people who don't want to fit anywhere else in the school. That's where they are. It's where their creative nature lies. And if they don't get the chance to express themselves, I don't really know that they're going to find a lot of direction with their life. I mean, what state and national recognition could they achieve or the school achieve if they were allowed to have that expression? Isn't the point of educating our students so that they will be the voice of tomorrow? The world looks a little boring and stifled if we don't give them anything worth saying. These are things we know will only make a difference if the arts are as important and respected as every other subject in this school. You're sending the wrong message to them by devaluing those subjects and not giving them the amount of classes they need. For instance, the orchestra students. I know next year there's going to be 49 students all in one class, all of extremely varying skill levels. It's like trying to learn freshman algebra at the same time as in the class other students are trying to learn honors pre-calculus or trigonometry. You need to give them the due time and the class provided to learn those things. It's just a room of cacophony is not going to do anyone any good, the teachers or the students. So please reconsider taking the arts down a notch every time that the budget becomes a problem. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak? Thank you for your time. I'm Hannah Michael, and I'm an honor student here, and the fine arts matter to me greatly. My, I speak on behalf of my sister and I, who graduated last year, and she was number seven in her class out of 375 students. We have recently started a petition to oppose suppressing RV's fine arts department. This already has over 850 signatures, and I will be reading a few of the comments people have shared and why they signed the petition. These comments range from being from past RB staff members, alumni, and members and parents of the community. I've already been informed from an aide in student services that five transfers to LT have been filed for current and incoming students because of the direct effect of the cuts to the arts. The comments are as follows. Angel Graff of the community says that the decision does not only affect current and future students, it affects the communities that support the school. They will not only struggle with a lack of fine arts education, but home values will drop if RV doesn't have a strong program. Many of my friends are looking to leave the city and move to the suburbs, and everyone who has heard about this was shocked at the decision and said that this decision affects their perception of buying in the district. Maggie Rubin says, as a formal visual art teacher at RBHS, I am a first-hand witness to the importance of music and art in so many students' lives. It is so important to adolescents at that age to feel a sense of belonging and what better place than in the music room where they can utilize their talents as a team to create something one of a kind. It would be heartbreaking to students, teachers, and community for slashes to be made to this excellent department. The music teachers I had the honor to work with truly put everything into the program and its students. Make, please make the right choice, one that will highlight the strengths of RB students through a well-funded program. Darlene Pendel says that she is signing this petition because all children should have the opportunity to sing. I was at RB when the music program was fantastic. <coughs> I'm sure it is still, but a reduction of FTE guarantees a reduction of the number of young people that are allowed to participate. Please do not shortchange the children of your district. Rachel Bennett, a theater major who graduated last year, says the performing arts are essential to Riverside Brookfield High School. Without proper education, students who wish to pursue music in college will not be admitted to the school of their choosing. Amy Weinert says, my daughter is a fine arts major working at Disney World right now because of the fine arts program and its strengths that were available to her at RBHS. And lastly, Gregory Colum says, as the former fine arts department chair, I'm proud of the quality of fine arts education that was developed and implemented over the course of many years. With the unwavering support of the board and administration <coughs> during that era, our department painstakingly drove 
strove to offer students the finest curriculum and instruction available. That legacy is now being threatened. You have 30, minutes, 30 seconds, I'm sorry. It is a very short-sighted policy that we begin to dismantle one of the finest fine arts departments in the metro area. However, I'm not blind to the issue of finances. He addresses the entire board in saying, I challenge you to study the research concerning the direct relationship between involvement in the arts and overall academic achievement. And while you're at it, do a little homework concerning the recommendations of the college board related to the fine arts programs. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else want to speak on this side? Please step up. Thank you for your time. My name is Anissa Selenica and I'm a current junior here at RB. Starting from the age of 10, I've had a passion for acting. In the past, I've struggled with health problems and I was constantly ill visiting doctors. Because of this, I never got the experience I needed to pursue my passion. Over the summer, I had open heart surgery to fix my health problems I was having. Now I'm healthier than ever and I'm determined to chase after my dreams. When I took acting and directing one, my anxiety faded anxieties on stage faded bit by bit every day. Next year is my senior year and I signed up for improv and sketch comedy. I, con I constantly signed up for this class to ho and hope that I'll be able to take it. I was devastated to find out that this class will not be running. However, if improv and sketch comedy were to run, I hope it would give other students confidence to speak up just as it gave me. This class, since this class mainly focuses on improv and comedy, it, cr it creates a stress-free and laid-back environment. Although public speaking can be stressful, this is always an opportunity to learn from other students who perform on stage. I believe this class will put students outside of their comfort, zo uh, comfort zone and teach how to work around it. The skits performed on stage are meant to make the audience laugh. The posi a positive class means positive student. This class gives students a chance to blossom their hidden talents. Mr. Fuller has taught me many things and I admire his teaching skills and embrace his intelligence. He helped me discover what I wanted to do for the rest of my life and that's theater work. He's a phenomenal person who showed me the secrets and true meaning of acting and directing. I, I as well and the other students who signed up for this class wanted to learn more through improv and sketch comedy. On behalf of all the 20 students who signed up, I'm asking that you consider opening this class again to us so we can have an opportunity to explore more of the theater word, world and beyond. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak on this side? All right, anybody on this side? All right, seeing none, let's close uh, visitor statements. And uh, let's go to, at this point, any uh, Board of Education members Want to add any additional discussion items to this uh, agenda tonight? Yeah, I definitely want to add what our follow-up communication is going to be on this subject because there's a huge disconnect from what we're hearing from the community or that we're devastating a program or now we're hearing we cut a class with 20 and I don't think we cut Did any. You speak up a <coughs> yes, I don't recall us cutting any classes that had 20 people in it. So somehow we have to educate the communication, the community, that things that are being told or saying aren't what we believe is true. Okay, anybody else? I'd second that. All right, 